On the couch in the corner of the room, Ian and Zach were locked in a serious conversation. After a moment of tense silence, Ian reached out and poured more wine into Zach's glass. Then he said in a low voice, I'll always remember very clearly that my wife is Madison. Zach wasn't sure if that was a joke or a promise. I suppose that all depends on how you choose to act from now on, Zach thought. If Ian was willing to support her, Madison would become a prominent member of the Weston family. If he wasn't, she could end up stuck in a miserable relationship with no way out. After that, the two of them didn't talk about the matter anymore. The conversation moved to gossip about mutual dealings and acquaintances, and although Madison still couldn't hear what they were saying, she felt the atmosphere improving between the two of them. Unfortunately, their pleasant lunch was about to take an unexpected turn. Without knowing that her actions would invite unwanted trouble, Madison turned to her friends and suggested ordering some food. The orange duck they serve here is just amazing. I think it's called... She trailed off as she scanned the menu for the name of the dish. Right, the duck is the orange. Ellie, I'm sure you'll love it. When her friends nodded in agreement, Madison pressed the service button to let the waitstaff know they wanted assistance. Only a moment later, when a server came in, she said... Could we have an order of the duck a la orange, please? Allie, Jason, what else would you... Before she could finish speaking, a voice from out in the hall interrupted her, saying, Do I hear Madison Greenwald's voice? A second later, Emmett Morris, Luke's father, came through the door, which the server had left open behind him. While Madison had never met him in person, she recognized him right away. It is Madison... Emmett said. He then turned to speak to someone behind him. I heard that she's going to get married as well, Luke. I heard that the two of you go to the same college. Have you ever met each other? Madison felt her stomach drop in dread as the door opened wider, and Luke walked in. What the hell are they doing here? She wondered, unable to stop her face from twisting. She looked as though she had bitten into something sour. For some reason... Although she was good at navigating social situations and choosing her words wisely, she had never quite grasped the ability to keep her emotions off her face. She had always worn her heart on her sleeve, unlike her younger sister, who had always been better at hiding her real feelings. That was part of the reason Kelsey was considered the friendlier of the two women. Luke walked in, and his eyes fell on Madison. She wore a simple yet classy dress, since she wanted to be dressed appropriately for her college presentation. Yes, we've met. She's Kelsey's older sister, he softly replied to his father. Suddenly, another voice rang out. What are you doing here? Stella asked, her tone full of dissatisfaction. Her husband was standing just behind her with an unhappy look on his face, as usual. Madison, stop following your brother around like a lost puppy. How old are you? She shook her head in annoyance. Don't ask your brother to seek help from the family if this blows up in your face. Even if we end up having a decent relationship with the Weston family, we don't want you to come crawling back for money, she mocked. Emmett raised his brows at Stella's words. He turned his head to look at Kelsey, who had walked in behind Luke, and felt satisfied as he chuckled and said, I never knew that the Greenwald family was connected to the Westons. Don't worry, though, Kelsey. You'll have a good marriage. If Luke gives you a hard time in the future, just tell me, and I'll help you deal with him. You won't have to ask your parents for anything. His little speech clearly outlined where Kelsey would stand in the Morris family. Madison, however, was particularly annoyed by Stella's behavior. She rolled her eyes and thought, she still has no idea who Ian's family is. If they heard her speaking that way, they'd be furious. Not that she'd dare to open her big mouth if she knew how influential the Westons really were. Mom, why are you all here? Zack asked as he got up and walked over. His face gave no clues as to what he was feeling or thinking. The family had recently tried to use him to hurt his sister, so he didn't want to give them any more ammunition. He would need to tread carefully at the moment. Ian invited us out for lunch, Zack informed. With that... 
Stella seemed to notice Ian for the first time. Her lips pursed in disdain as she spoke. I'm not sure how you even managed to get a room in the Griffin. I hope you're planning to pay for your bill and don't expect us to cover it for you later. Madison flushed with anger and moved to stand up, but Allie grabbed her arm and stopped her. Jason sat in silence, looking as though he couldn't believe the scene that was unfolding in front of him. Ian, Madison, you came here for lunch? Kelsey asked. Her voice was gentle and light, making Luke's tight expression loosen. Why don't you come with us so we can talk about wedding plans? Maybe you can use it as an opportunity to get some classy ideas for your celebration. While her sister's offer sounded genuine on the surface, Madison knew she was trying to dig at her and Ian. Allie's face twisted into something ugly as she looked at Kelsey. This time, Madison had to grab her arm to stop her friend from getting up and yelling at the uninvited group. There were five people there who attended the same college, so they were all aware that Madison and Luke had been dating for four years. Allie and Jason were stunned that Kelsey dared to not only steal her sister's boyfriend, but to flaunt her relationship this way in public. Even though Kelsey was younger than her sister, she had always wanted to be the first one to get married. She was willing to do almost anything to make sure that happened. To make matters worse, it was now clear to everyone that Luke had never told his family about his relationship with Madison. Ian got up off the couch and came around to stand next to his wife. He faced the newcomers and softly replied, Thank you, but there's no need. My family has already started making preparations for our wedding celebration. Kelsey stiffened slightly, though she ensured her face still looked pleasant as she thought, how come every time I try to say anything to my sister, he always seems to be there? He's ruining everything. I don't even know why he likes her, let alone why he's always interfering in our business. Kelsey was about to say something when the manager came through the door with the waiter who was carrying their food. Annoyed at the interruption, her gaze landed on the plate of duck. Surprised at the sight, she asked, Didn't the hostess say that the kitchen was out of duck? I tried to order some when we arrived 20 minutes ago. Where did this come from? As she finished speaking, the Morrises and Greenwalds all turned to look at the manager. Mr. Williams gestured that the server should deliver the food before turning back to his disgruntled guests. An apologetic look was on his face as he said, My apologies, Miss Greenwald. We were very low on our supply of duck when you tried to order. Since we knew the Weston family had a reservation, and they ordered the dish on their last visit, we held a serving for them as a courtesy. Everyone went silent. However, Mr. Williams seemed to not realize the impact of his words and continued, Although the Griffin hosts guests of all levels of wealth and fame, we have to ensure we stay in the Weston family's good graces, of course. While we can't serve you duck, I'd be happy to personally bring you anything else on the menu. Luke, Kelsey, and their families felt a chill at the manager's words. This was the most exclusive highbrow restaurant in the city. Not only did some of the most powerful people in the country visit regularly, but it also rumored that the Phantom owned this restaurant. They had all no idea why the manager of such an establishment would be so afraid of offending a simple doctor. Mr. Williams, you must be joking. John said as he took a step forward and smiled, though I appreciate you trying to be gracious to Dr. Weston. Mr. Williams' eyes darted back and forth between the two groups, and he was clearly flustered by the situation. He looked at Ian, who used his head to gesture toward the hallway, indicating that the manager should step out. He gratefully took the opportunity to leave. Stella stepped further into the room, with John and Emmett following behind her, she and Zoe Morris, Luke's mother, were talking and laughing as they nonchalantly took a seat at the table. They looked around and noticed that there wasn't much food left beside the recently delivered duck, and Stella quickly pressed the service button to call the waitstaff. As soon as the server returned to the room, she rudely demanded, What's the problem here? There's not enough food for our group. Hurry up and bring some more dishes. She scoffed and added, How could they serve this to us? All of this would be a sad excuse for leftovers, let alone an actual meal. Are they trying to insult us? 
Madison had been trying very hard not to react to her family, but she couldn't bear it any longer. She walked around the table to face Stella and blurted, Mom, didn't you all have something to talk about? Go to your private room. We aren't done here yet. Stella's face immediately darkened. She slammed her palm on the table, stood up, and then pointed at Madison as she asserted, You shameless brat. Do you think you could have gotten in here if it weren't with your brother? Do you have any idea what kind of place this is? I can't imagine what possessed you to bring your little friends here. You even asked Griffin to give you the platinum room. Are you brainless? This room is incredibly exclusive. Who do you think you are, do you? Unable to take any more, Zack interrupted. I've never been allowed to book this room. His words caused them all to fall silent again. Then, in a less polite tone, he added, It's always been reserved for the Weston family. As far as I know, it's never been used to entertain regular guests.